Hello, and welcome to day 49 of 100 Days of Tonalism. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the study that I've done today is called Moonlight Tarpon Springs by George Ines. Um, we are doing a lot of Inesses in this series. If you've uh, been with us um, this long, you'll know that. We've probably done about, oh, I don't know, 14 or so, so far, and we have a lot more to come maybe 15 or 16, I'm not sure. I haven't actually counted. Um, last time we were working on an S, I've been reading uh, from a book by Nikolai Chiskowski called George and S, and it's quite a good book. I highly recommend it. It's um, not actually in print, but uh, it's pretty easy to get copies of it used. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up where I left off, which is we were talking about the um, the effect that the Barbizon painting in in France had on Georgian uh really quite quite a while before most other American artists were even aware of it. So, Ness sailed to America from Liverpool after his first European trip, returning, he said later, through Paris and seeing the Salon on his way home. He could have spent only a week or two in France, but it was enough time to see things that brought him back as soon as it could be managed. What lured Ines to France were the landscape paintings of the Barbizon School, so-called because most of its members worked in and around the village of Barbizon in the Fontainebleau forest near Paris. Under the influence of the Barbizon School, Ines remade his art, substituting its more colorful, suggestive, and informal pictorial language for the dark tones, tight handling, and contrived compositions of the Claudian landscape tradition. That substitution, however, uh, however, was neither wholesale nor immediate, for it took Ines several years to come to terms, hesitant hesitantly and uncertainly with Barbizon's style. From time to time, Ines imitated the mood, manner, and motifs of Barbizon art, and reflected the style of particular Barbizon artists, such as Theodore Rousseau, a painting of whose he saw in the Salon in 1851, which he thought rather metallic but who, he said, later was perhaps the greatest French landscape painter, and who was described as his great light, his guiding star. Um, he was also influenced by Charles Dobney and Camille Corot, as well as some others. Um, despite incidents of undeniably close imitation, however, Ines was never a copyist of Barbizon style. The very newness of Barbizon art, its newness to Ines and its historical recentness, I made mean, its digestion complicated and problematic. It was also clearly Ines's intention not to conform himself to, but to inform himself with Barbizon art, to make it his own by testing its possibilities and exploring its range. By placing his art outside the sanctioned systems of landscape painting, Ines's Barbizon style placed him beyond the reach of critical understanding and approval in America. Earlier, his art had been noticed frequently, and if not always favorably, at least with solicitous concern for its improvement. Now his paintings were sim simply baffling, rendering his critics neither silent with disapproval and incomprehension. Ines's art was not, was not scarcely noticed in the later 1850s, although he exhibited regularly at the Academy and lived in New York, or a provoking response uh, such as the following, uh, which I won't read, uh, from a uh, paper called The Knickerbocker that was, you know, just negative. Um, and this is pictures are not just artificial and redolent of the old masters, but simply indecipherable. He's not simply misguided, but has criminally transgressed the rules of art and the accepted limits of public comprehension. Unfortunately, we do not know the painting that provoked this critical scolding. I'll leave it there for now, because I can see we're getting close to the end, but... There's a great lesson in here for, for every artist that, you know, even if it's not necessarily popular for you at the time, you need to follow your inner guidance and that, uh, that strong desire that we all have to do excellent artwork. Uh, it really needs to be given a full um, and complete uh, subservious and, and, and attention. Uh, and in Ines's case, uh, even though uh, in 1851, 52, he was lambasted, uh, by the end of his life, he was regarded as the greatest landscape painter that America had ever produced. So, 
Um, anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end. Thank you for, of this video, anyway. Uh, thank you for joining me for day 49, and join us tomorrow for day 50. Um, if you'd like to see more of my work, you can go to landscapepainter.co.nz or nz and check it out there. And we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Meanwhile, stay out of trouble.